Another episode of the podcast, CP from Knicks Fan TV, my man JL's from Nick Time Show. What's good, my dude? Chilling, man. Back at it again. Yep. Holiday times are here. Yep, only getting two or three pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanksgiving was all right. Yeah, Thanksgiving was, was all right. Yeah, mac and cheese was, was, was top notch. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> hasn't, been a, uh, hasn't been a good Thanksgiving for the Knicks, man, or a good season. We're at the quarter season mark. Yeah. 21 games into it. Four and 17. Yeah. Where do we go from here, man? Uh, Fizdale on the brink. On the brink of extermination. Yeah. I, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I'm smelling smoke right now, it's, it's I'm almost smelling smoke. It's, it seems like there might be new faces soon. I don't want to get too ahead of myself because yeah. you, you see news coming from, you know, Ian on SNY. But I'm seeing some isola in this that he's I, quoting, I so I don't know. You know Isola we, love we to stir the cesspool. You know it. You know it. You know it, you know it man. It's like a city rat, man. When Yo. they smell that food, yeah. they start to swarm, man, like vultures. So it can happen, but I don't know. I feel like Perry is a chess player. Yeah. He, he likes to wait in the wind and analyze every situation. Like, even the way he, he hired Fizz, he hired, he, like, looked at 37 coaches and then hired a lot of coaches. Yeah, so, I mean, I made that number up randomly. <laughs> but it was around, like, 13, though. Yeah, it was around. Because it was Budenholz, holes, it was on the list. Mark Jackson. Yeah. Right? You had Monty Williams. Yeah. You had a uh, uh, guy from the Spurs. His name is, name is slipping me. Um, uh, got, the, wasn't then Borrego get a look? Uh, I don't know. Wasn't Dave Borrego? Borrego, uh, uh, Laranega uh, from the Celtics. Yeah, you, you got a good memory, man. Remember. Yeah, there, there, was a lot, there was a lot of candidates in the hat, man. But we went with Fizz. Yeah, we definitely went with Fizz. And, and this is year two of the Fizzdale era. I mean, were you surprised at the, at this start? Four and seventeen. I can't really say I'm surprised, man. What, what about you? I'm surprised, man. Look, I, I didn't think we were gonna be world beaters. I didn't think we was making the playoffs or getting a chip or whatever. But I did think we was gonna be a lot more competitive than we have been. I did think we was gonna beat get teams like the Sacramento Kings yeah. and the Cavs and guys like that. I thought we would have like maybe seven wins, eight wins at this point. But four, having. You know, on pace to be like the having the worst start Whoa. in Knicks history. We are trending to be the worst team <laughs> in the history of the franchise. Yeah. How do you spend? I'll say it again, bro. How do you spend eighty million dollars around eighty million dollars on free agents and come out with a worst team? If that's the case, we should have just gave Moody a bag, a yeah. two-year bag, yeah. Von Lay, yeah. a Zonia. Bring back Von Lay, Bring back <laughs> Yo, you owe Moody an apology, man. You called, ah, it, you ah, called him the tank commander. Ah, right? ah, yeah, it was all me. Nobody was watching this man <laughs> TV the whole nah, year. No, we, we trashed Moody, man. <laughs> we definitely trashed Moody, man. I, I just don't get it, bro. I, I just don't get it. Yeah, that's, it's, a, it's a lot of things happen, man. It's like a little bit of bad luck with Alfred Payton going down. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of uh, more bad luck with Dennis Smith Jr. having the back surgery mixed with facts, the stepmom. Facts, facts. Mixed with Fizz not knowing what the hell he's doing sometimes. Got Knox playing the two. <laughs> it just, sometimes it just feels like he just doesn't have a pulse in the team. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not for sure. I think the point guard position is going as bad as uh, can be right now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like we always said in the season preview, at least I said that, if we're, if we're going to have a semi-decent season that you could appreciate, playoffs or not, right. DSA has to take the next step. Yeah. And and we're seeing – saw a couple good games. The Dallas game was a pretty good game. I think the second Philly game, he was all right. But other than that, DSA has been pretty bad, bro. Yeah, like, in, in reality, though, we, we failed to have two competent point guards available at the same time. Because if you remember, when we first started, everybody was down on Elfie Payton. And then the week after that, everybody was like, Alfred Payton is the point guard. Facts. And then the week after that, he was gone. So. He was gone. <laughs> he was gone. And we were scrambling. Yeah. So, like, if you really think about it, there hasn't been a time where we've had a guy who can bring up the ball. I mean, more than one. Like, we had Payton for the stretch. And then it seemed like Frank stepped Frank up. Frank came on hot and, and cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not to say he's the best point guard in the world, but he, right. he steadied the ship a little bit. And now Frank is down. DSJ, he's... Rock. Had that one it's decent rock. game with 17 points and he assists, I, I believe, off the top of my head. Yeah. And then the next game was a clunker. So I, we just – I think I, the first thing we need to have is just two stable point guards. I think we need if, – if, 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 we need one, man. We need one. one two, two would be a luxury. Two we would be a We need one lu- competent point guard right now, bro. But, but I'm I just, think that's the start of the problems. For real, but it's like we have, we playing Frank 32 minutes 
uh, a minute yeah. of the game. We're afraid to play DSJ now. And now that Frank is down, it's not. It's like now what? So, I mean, look, yeah. Alfred Payton is, is rumored to come back very soon. Maybe so, yeah, maybe even against Denver, Thursday night against Denver. Exactly. So, maybe we'll actually have more of, uh, you know, a stability. With dead last in pace, we're almost pretty much at the bottom in offensive rating. Yeah. Seems like nothing has changed since last year, man. I, I mean, one thing Moody did was push the pace. Moody did push the pace. I mean, he didn't pass the ball, the but he he ran. Fact. He, was, he was trying to be Mr. <laughs> fourth Quarter. Yeah. He, he was trying to be Mr. Fourth Quarter. Exactly. So, I think, you know, as as we look at this season, obviously the development was a key, you know. Uh, DSJ is certainly taking a step back. Whether it was the injuries, yeah. the bereavement, he doesn't look half as, as what he even came into the league nah, right now. Nah. He, he's looking terrible right now. Um. But you could see in Frank, Frank is taking a little bit of a step up. Yeah. Offensively, mm-hmm. we saw some some improvements here and there. Not consistently. Yeah. But we, we've seen him get involved, get the team involved, get the guys organized. It just, he's, he's just, it's not on a consistent basis. Yeah, it's not on a consistent basis. And you're hoping that the injury doesn't set him back either because that kind of seems to be the the pattern with Frank he might that's, seem, that's the pain point with Frank right like now. even last year I know people like to say that he that he uh have had every shot to succeed last year but he really didn't he missed half the season and I felt like when he started to when you start to see the beginnings of uh dribble penetration happening not consistently but just a little bit of the aggressiveness off the dribble that's when he got injured and we didn't see him again until till FIBA so it's 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 a, it's a journey for Frank, but you're starting to see it. You're starting to see the aggressiveness from three. You're starting yeah. to see a, a pull back, a jump back, a step back game forming, and the handle forming too. A little stat, little mid range Frank going, coming yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. You know? Even from three. I, I don't think I've even seen him miss a three point step back so far. Correct me if yeah. I'm wrong. I don't think I've seen him miss I mean, one. his home in the road splits is definitely still kind of crazy. Definitely. Um, definitely don't like the guard. But, you know, certainly from the defensive end, we, you, we know what he's going to bring. He's the most competent, uh, uh, skilled defender um, within the backcourt or guarding the perimeter. You, you noticeably see, whether you're looking at the analytics or you're just going with the eye test, you sure. see things fall off a cliff when Frank goes out and DSJ comes in. It's, it's night and day. Oh, yeah, and it seems like the, the coach finally notices it. Because <laughs> I don't know what it is. It seemed like he didn't notice for the first few years. But now he finally notices it. Hopefully it stays that way when this Frank with – with DSJ, with Alpha Payton. This this was a, a tweet from Nick's Nuance. He's with um, Post and Toast and shout out Nick, Nick's Nuance. He said, with Frank on the floor, with 12 and a half points per 100 possessions better off. 12, 12 mm-hmm. and a half points better uh, with Frank all, with Frank on the floor. Yeah, yeah. I've, seen, I've seen something like that. He has the second highest on off rate on the team. Only behind Alpha Payton. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so now, so now, that's where things are going to get interesting once again because you have Payton on the way back. Yep. Frank on the way back as well. Yep. I would assume, well, you can't assume nothing with this, right? Anything. But I would think that Frank is kept in the starting lineup for now. Has to. Right? If he's back, if he's back 100, percent because both of them guys should be could be back uh, by the time then we play the Nuggets. By the time we play the Nuggets, mm-hmm. so then again, it's back to the rotation. Is DSJ now back out to get Peyton back in? Here's the thing. This is this is this is when it gets this is when it gets funny because what do you favor now? Do you favor stability and wins, or do you favor development? I think we gotta we gotta start to transition. Yeah. What, what do you think? If you start to transition right now, then you just have to give DSJ those minutes regardless if Peyton is better or not. Yeah. Just to like just because we have more invested in him, he's part of the KP trade. Uh like that trade is always gonna be hanging over our head. Besides those two picks, something has to come from from that. So I think we should stick with DSJ and hope that he kinda snaps out of it. At least give us what he was last season. You know facts, what I mean? Facts, facts. <laughs> Yeah, it's, that's going to be interesting, man. And then back to the guards, development-wise, Iso Zoe's been in the news. Mm. Now, Iso got burned. He, I think he had like seven or eight straight DMPs. Got in in the Bucks game. Yeah. Offensively looked good. It's yeah. typical Iso. You know, Iso can come in and, and get his five, six straight points, 
just coming in rusty no matter what. Yeah. It's a defensive end. Yeah. That that's a trick. And so back to your point, winning versus development, I'd rather go with ISO struggling on the defensive end or, you know, not really getting into the flow of the offense. Right. Just to let him shake that off rather than going with Wayne Ellington, bro. We got to cancel that Wayne Ellington experiment, bro. That's part of the transition I feel that, that I need to see. I mean, I guess it depends on what part of the season you're, you're thinking about, too, because uh, I guess right now it would make more sense to do ISO if you're going to do that with DSJ as well. Beforehand, though, I didn't mind it only because, you know, Fizz is going with these players like Dotson, like Wayne Elton, who are at least going to give you effort on the defensive end. Facts. And if ISO is not going to do that, I agree to sit him. I, I have the same stance with uh, with Kev as well. Yeah. But um, it might be time to, to play him a little bit more if we're not going to go anywhere. But I, like if, we, still, if we lose him with yeah, Elton, let me yeah, lose with ISO. Exactly. But I just I – just, I, at least I have not been – you know, keen on everything that Fizz has done, but I do at least feel like he's trying to set a tone defensively. Yeah. I just wish we would do that for Randall. But <laughs> that, that, that's yeah. another thing with Fizz, right? We're, we're in the middle of this development talk, but the, the, the accountability aspect of it is just up and down. Yeah. And, and we'll get to Randall, but... Specifically with the vets, I yeah. think, but go ahead. Yeah. yeah, no, specifically with the vets. And I understand, you know, playing these vets that you just got. Mm-hmm. The owner spent that money, yeah. as I've been saying. You're going to expect the veterans to get that burn in the in the initial run. That's a fact. Uh, you got to try to win with some of these guys. But I, again, I think it's time to to make that transition to 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 the development because we just right now we're on pace to be the worst team in history, bro. So we might as well just go with the kids. Yeah, we might as well. But will Fizz do that? I I don't know if he will because of the heat right now. Like when you get to this point of the season, when everybody's saying, you know, you're not getting enough out of these people, like they're he's gonna want to win. Like his yeah. record is. Tritted ash right now, man. There's gonna be trash. more pressure for him to win now than Fizz, ever. His record so, is trash. So man. I feel like he might try to push this till January, if anything, just to say, you know, look, I'm I'm making some progress with this team with the way I want to play. If he pulls the plug now on the kids, that means like the the front office kind of has to back him, expect the losses to come. Right. So that's it's a tough situation. It's, it's a, a lose, tough balance. It's a lose lose for, for Fizz right it's, now. It's a tough balance it's for Fizz. Lose lose for Fizz right now. Um, <laughs> let's go to Kev. Losing Kev right now. Yeah. Start of the season off hot. First 10 games, he's been hot. Mm-hmm. Offensively. Yep. Jump shot was nice. It was pure. I mean, it's still the same, actually. But. I, I think it still is the same, but I think the defensive end. Yeah. He, he's gone, man. He is. Yeah, man. The thing with Kev is he just, uh, I don't know. Like, these kids have regressed a little bit. Uh, he's showing some With the promise. exception of Frank. But with the yeah, exception yeah, of Frank, Kev. yeah. I do. I will say Kev has done better. With the passing, mm-hmm. but um, everything else seems to be going by the wayside, and you, you just hope he snaps out of it. And people call me hard on Kev, they call, but listen, if you're not playing defense, if it's gonna sit you, I don't yeah. care. Let him sit. He, he's had the green light all season. He's been, he's been wearing Pampers all last season. Yeah. It's time for the you know put on your big boy draws and play some defense True. and earn your minutes. True. Sometimes now, when it comes to the development time, put him in. But right. At the beginning of the season, we trying to get squeak keep, some wins keep, out. You're going to keep what you kill. Yeah, you're you going to keep what you, what you kill, kill until it's time to tank for real oh, yeah. and get uh, Anthony Cole or whoever you want over here. What up, Knicks fans? As you guys know, man, the show's been sponsored by Scotch Porter Premium Beard brand of products for the holiday season. Make sure you pick up your beard collection. They are 50% off. This is the product that I personally use myself. I use the uh, the beard wash. <laughs> The beard conditioner and the beard balm. It's all natural products. Keeps my beard smelling nice, smooth, and and gives you a nice little finish. So make sure you guys pick that up. Ladies, pick that up for you for your dudes for the holiday season. Fellas, make sure you put it on, man. You, you ladies will appreciate you for it. And like I said, it's 50% off. Go to scotchporter.com slash hashtag KFTV. Scotchporter.com slash Hashtag KFTV, and you'll get 50% off all of the beard and hair care collections. They have a new CBD fragrance out and a couple other theme fragrances as well to add to the collection. So there's definitely something out there for everybody. Like I said, I I don't promote products that I don't use, so definitely check it out. Scotchporter.com slash hashtag KFTV. Peace. Mitch. Backwards. Mitch, I think Mitch is going backwards. 
Yeah. The activity's still there. I think the blocks are still there. Um, the discipline is is going either negative or the same as last year. Yeah, he, he came in with that, man. He came in like he came in with that motor and and that intensity. So I don't expect that to go anywhere. In them, but the discipline has to get better. Uh, it seemed like DeAndre Jordan was a better uh, teacher for him because you saw what he did, the impact DeAndre Jordan had on him as soon as he was here. And now that he's gone and it's Taj, no knock on Taj, mm. but it just seems like, you know, that he just responds better to DeAndre. And it's up to the coaching staff to kind of keep that up and drill it in him. Man. Yeah. The, you know, remember what you were at the end of last season? Like, you were kind of keeping that up. He was... You had your fouls down, you know. Right. You was more disciplined, and you was, you know, you were staying on the floor a lot more. We need that old Mitch back. Need that old Mitch back. Yeah. And you know what? Give credit to him. He's he's taking that on his shoulders after the Milwaukee Bucks loss. We got blown out by forty four points. Mm-hmm. You know, Mitch went on Twitter say, you know, I got to play better and 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 uh, and get right. So Mitch is taking that accountability on on himself, you know, holding himself accountable. Yeah. So I think that's a good thing. Yeah, most definitely. Maybe Fizz needs to bring back that uh, push up rule because he said he hate doing push ups last yeah, season. Said. I don't know if you remember, but Fizz made Mitch do p- push ups every time he committed a serious, uh, silly reaching foul. He needs to yeah. bring that back. How about RJ? Where do you think RJ is at right now in the at the quarter season point? RJ is RJ, man. He's a rookie. Um, I will say this about RJ. He is a good all-around player, just like he was in Duke. Um, there were certain things that I were concerned about that I'm seeing on the Knicks, but I also see, you know, he has a killer instinct. Yeah. So I, I kind of like where he's going. Uh, what surprised me about him is his defense is better than I thought it was going to be. That, that surprised me. Right? That surprised me. That his make, defense is much better than what we thought it would be. Right. So, so like, in it. it, it, it I'm a lot more comfortable keeping him on the floor and letting him figure it out on the offense and knowing he's going to put that work in on the defensive end. So I'm happy with that. Uh, I wish he would finish at the hole with a lot higher clip. Yeah. He seemed like he was doing that at the beginning of the season. In the beginning season, he was, right. Kind of tape it off a little bit. Yeah, but he kind of tape it off. Yeah. But overall, you know, RJ, rookie, oh, rookie year, I just like the fact that he has that, that instinct in him and yeah. he has a chance to be great. Hey, still has a chance to be the rookie of the year. Yeah. You know, points, assists, rebounds, steals. He's right up there in the top three, top five mm-hmm. with Morant. You know, none is a problem with the Heat. He's, he's an un, uh, uh, unexpected surprise uh, rookie prospect. So, I think I think RJ's having a good, solid year so far. Yeah, man. It's like, hit your free throws. If he hit his free yeah. throws, he'd be averaging yeah. 18 a game. Now, now, he's still building bricks out there. Let's yeah, not, man. You know, let's, let's keep it real. He's no, building a lot of is. bricks out there. He but I think, that, I think that was an expected part of his game mm-hmm. that – with his skill set and with his attitude, you would expect that to improve over time. Right. So I kind of let the, the the field goal percentage, I kind of yeah, let that slide like from because we kind of expected that. He's a rookie. Like, generally for me, generally speaking, when I look at rookies, I give rookies like a three-year pass really yeah. to like kind of suck on offense. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And then you can suck on defense as well, but you just need to be, you know, alert and give effort. So – RJ's doing that. I don't really have any problems with RJ. Yeah, I, I think RJ's been solid. But uh, again, for DSJ, for Knox, for Mitch, for ISO, you got to figure out how to bring them back into the fold. Yeah. I think the question becomes: Do do you trust right now? Do you trust this regime to continue the development route with these kids? I, I think that's the primary question. With another draft top lottery pick coming in, I don't know. That's. That's a great yeah, question because we had a bunch of assistant coaches here who were brought here particularly to develop these guys. Yeah. So uh, it seems like they were real respected around the league, you know, so I, I don't think all that just goes away. So maybe it is just a matter of the head coach kind of reinforcing things and, and putting, you know, putting, forcing them to put things into practice on, on the floor. So yeah. it might be a coaching change. I don't know what it is, man. I think – See, this is my thing with the Fizz thing. I think I do think his days are numbered. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I've I've been pretty uh, steadfast in that. I don't think he's going to last through this tough grind that they have, this tough schedule. I think, I think the players do respect him. I think the young players do respect him. And you could argue whether or not the roster was constructed properly or not, but right. I still think there's certain aspects that he's not getting through to them. 
Yeah. Because you still seen the same mistakes over and over again. Absolutely. And yeah, you can blame the players to a certain extent, but also you got to think, is his message Account- getting across? Accountability. And how is he holding guys accountable? Yeah. You know what I mean? Nah. I so I you. don't think he's going to last, but I just argue the opportunity cost. You know, are the other options at the interim basis, does it make sense to go that route? Like we saw in Isola's article in The Athletic, he's saying Mike Miller could get uh, the consideration at the interim level. Right. But then you see in other articles come out saying that the organization's not really high on any of the assistants. Right, yeah. Mike Miller's one, somebody that we would definitely yeah, do we research talked, on. Yeah, I mean, we, we talked about him. Like, he's done well for the G League. Uh, I think they had, like, the second highest defensive rating on the team with him running. So I don't mind having a guy like that, you know, giving him a shot. Um, but I don't know. To be honest, I'm kind of bullish on even doing the in mid season change, man. To me, the reason I'm, I'm kind of, uh, against it is because you don't really see that working for the, for the long term. Like I can see if Fizz gets fired. Number one, I think if Fizz, I think if Dolan is going to make the change, I think he's going to nuke the whole thing, bro. Mm. I, I think he will get rid of Fizz. And I think Mills and Perry go as well. I think Dolan will start over. I'm not sure how true the Ujiri rumors are, right. but I think he will try to do that. I can definitely see Dolan doing that. I, I think he'll nuke the whole thing, bro. Yeah, and, and, and as far as Scott Perry and those guys go, it seems like their best case scenario is Fizz figures it out. Right. And saves both and saves everybody. It saves everybody. <laughs> and Fizz saves, saves everybody. everybody. That's the base case. That's the best yeah. case. If, if they fire the coach. Like you said, they could be very well next. They could be very well next, bro. And I, I think Dolan may want to start over, start from scratch. For some reason, I'm just getting that in. And that's just, uh, I can't, man. Like, that's All rough. over again. That's rough. I do not need RJ starting off with, a, like, like a KP situation yeah. all over again. Yeah, that's what I don't. But, I mean, if you're talking about bringing a guy like Ujiri in here, I would trust it. If that can, if it can if happen. If that can happen. You're going to have to pony up a pick. Shh. Because he's still on the contract, so you're going to have to compensate the Raptors to even get him out of that. We gave we gave, uh, we gave Perry a pick. We just going to give picks all willy-nilly, man. Like, come on, man. Trey Moot. <laughs> Tra- that, could, that could be your, your asset for Moot. You Trey Morris. Try to get back into the first round. I I throw that late first round to Fujiri, man. That's um, how serious it is, J. Ellis. We need that stability, man. We need, I like you see Bill, how we got Toronto man. looking, man. Everybody on the team is built like Siaka, man. I know. <laughs> they can not we even, have? Can we do that here? Can we do that here? Right now. Well, right now. I, does, do the Knicks fans have a patience for Siaka, man? I don't even know what they really do, though. Yeah, and that that's the thing, right? That's the thing. As we talk about the development, um, you know, after the Raptors game, I was talking to my uncle. My uncle's a Raptors fan. And, you know, he's been diehard Raptors fan since their inception. And he was saying, you know, look at the whole team. The whole team that played that night, not not Lowry, not uh, uh, Serge, but outside of Gasol and outside of House Jefferson, that whole team came up through the system. Yeah, man. The whole team came up through the system. And I, that's, that's, that's the thing. I don't know if Knicks fans have you know, the patience for that. They were trying to can Frank Lukina uh, <laughs> early. 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 And I was sitting there like, yo, early, we need to man. get this kid time. He can see the raw tools. He can yeah. do something, but we just have to – build on some of these guys and have patience so it's like and even the guys i'm down on even guys like kev who i'm like yo get it together you gotta have patience across the board with everybody patience. man gotta have patience Shoot. i mean i'm I, just thinking with with I, I i definitely have patience for it i'm just thinking from yeah. a dolan standpoint that's if the thing. this thing continues to spiral out of control after the money that he spent yeah after the plan that you told them was gonna put a more competitive basketball team out yeah. there and they finish with a worse or same hovering, same record. Yeah, I can see him coming in. And I can see him nuking the whole thing. I could definitely. I can see him nuking the whole thing, bro. I could definitely see it, man. And yeah. I, I, I like. I don't want it to happen. Truthfully, I I'm, I know I'm hanging on to a prayer, like a hail mary that I, that I just probably don't even see being completed. But yeah. it just seems like, oh man, just the thought of starting over is the pressure. The thought of starting man. over is a pre- I mean, but you're really just starting over from a regime standpoint but your assets are still there yeah you know if you knock on wood and you look at it from the outside in we still have these young pieces that we're trying to figure out who's who it de- but we're still going back into the top of the lottery man. it depends on what you know who's in here because right 
we've had a certain philosophy here for a few years and you kind of have to make sure whoever you bring in here even can kind of stay aligned with a lot of the philosophy of you know bringing in more young talent not mortgaging our future by trading a bunch of picks for win now veterans like I just don't I mean, wanna... who else around the league does that? I don't but, know. But us, man. I don't know how PTSD. <laughs> I don't maybe, know. Jo- maybe Joe Dumas. I don't, I don't know. know. In the beginning, he was know. all right. I don't know. You know, PTSD. who else around the league mortgages their future more than the Knicks? Bro? I don't know, man. That's what I'm afraid of. You know. Bro. So, uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, then, from the vet standpoint, obviously, through these first 20 games, you like what Morris has given us, right? Yeah, Career man. highs in shooting, mm-hmm. rebounds, three point percentage, the, the top three point percentage Fact. shooter in the league. I think that's been a bright spot. And whether or not you want to trade him, that's another argument amongst the fan base. Some yeah. want to keep him for what he brings to the team. I don't know. What do you think? Man? I'm on the minority side. I already know. At least on uh, as far as Nick's Twitter goes, I'm yeah. on the minority side. So you're you're on the keep. I'm on, on the, the keep, keep him side. side. I'm on the keep him. So, but I I just know that Morris is a New York bred dude not not in the sense that he's from here but he has the attitude that he's going to give 100 percent effort every time he's going to play on offense and he's going to play on defense now he chucks too much sometimes i get it but i figured you know you get a coach yeah. in here who can reel him in sometimes well, can you better. blame him i mean sometimes when you look at the incompetence of this offense i look at mars i look at randall and and yes the iso stuff does become a bit uh overkill sometimes but then sometimes you look it's like we have nobody doing anything out I there. Feel, nah, no, I get it. I get it at times, but there's other times where it's egregious. You know what I mean? Yeah. When there's three people on you and the dude in the corner has <laughs> been hitting. <laughs> sitting there pitching a tent. Exactly. Pitching a tent. And he, like, he's hit two in a row. Yeah. You know, that's what You might want to go back to him. You might like, want to go back to So, so, so that's, that's what I mean. Yeah. Like, like, I don't mind him ISO when you got to go in sometimes. But, you know, pick your spots. That's all I'm saying. Hey, pick your spots. Pick your spots. So we'll see. But I'll trade. If I can get back into the first round, I'm trading. I'm, I'm collecting that ass. I like what he brings to the team. Don't get me wrong. And a lot of people uh, look at, you know, people saying trade Mars as an indictment on him. It's not an indictment on him. It's a need to continue building. I feel you. I'm Especially, saying. Especially, like, we don't have young shooters. We need some more defense, you know, on, on, on the on the front court. What defense? Who? who hi, wait, you're going to pit it. Who's going to? Like, we have other – that's my thing is we have other assets that we can trade for picks. I know Morris is probably going to, you know, bring us the, the highest pick. But, I mean – Definitely. Yeah. I don't I don't really see any other guy on this team as tradable. Randall? Poor I don't even see him as tradable. That's the thing. I think Randall – is think trade- you, you, I think Randall is tradable, man. I really do because. But I'm talking about realistic trade. I, I'm more so than even the package. They they're not gonna trade him, Jay. Here's a you know, here's the thing. Randall has been a great player in the NBA. A pretty good player in the NBA for the last three years. This yeah. is the the low. Yeah. You know, what I'm it's the low. Last well, it's year he averaged. Been a bad situation for him, but again. Last year he averaged 21 and eight and shot 52 percent from the field. And before that he was no slouch either. And the year before that it's the same. So, I think there still is a shot that people will be like, "Ooh, that's that was a bad situation." Yeah. And not that he's bad. And then we can get something for him. You know what I mean? It's certainly possible. I just don't see them going back on their prize free agent acquisition. And, and just admitting that it's not working out, I think they'll give it a chance, and, and they'll need to because, as we said, we know Randall's not the number one option. No, he's not. Like right? he doesn't have the to me doesn't have the IQ to be number one. No, option. that's that's exactly right. Yeah. He doesn't. He does. I, I think he has a killer instinct. Yeah, he has the instinct, but the rest is just yeah. lagging behind. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's just lagging behind Even a little he, bit. He hasn't had read the coordination. The coordination. The coordination how to is, read the game. Is, yeah, he's lacking. Instance. Yeah, that's the thing that's missing from. Yeah. Me. I still listen. I, I still want Randall around. I know a lot of people are down on him right now. I still want him around so that if we do get a talent upgrade, and he can kind of dial it back a little bit and trust who he's out there on the court with, we we've seen it, man. Yeah, we've seen those games when he settles in, takes what the defense is giving to him, and just trusts what he's doing out there. He's a much better player. Yeah, he's a much better player. That's true. That's definitely true. Like because. You know he hasn't had the, he hasn't had the trust in other players. He's probably d- pressing and doing a little bit too much, and he can probably come back to where he was last season if he's not the second option. Yeah. But who are we getting in the next two years? It's not going to be. It's going to take that option away from him. Anthony Edwards. 
Mm. It gotta be year Anthony one. Evans. Year one. Year one. Okay, he's ready to go. He's, <laughs> he's ready, ready to, go, to go right now. He's ready to Jay. go. He's ready to go right now. All right. I would take that kid. All right, John. If we got the chance, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Anthony Edwards would nah, have to be that guy. Nice. We nice. we would need that young alpha dog, man. Yeah, he's nice. I would take him too. You know, and Anthony Edwards would, would definitely be that guy. I do like how Taj has been playing uh, this this way this quarter so far. I think since he's gotten into the starting lineup. I like the leadership that he's brought. I like the balance that he brings on both ends. Mm-hmm. Uh, the adult in the room on the court yeah. can get guys in order. You know, I think I think he needs to be playing more. Can he play more? I think he needs to be playing more. This was interesting, man. Let me pull up this. Um, can he play more? Fizz always talks about, you know, reducing his minutes and keeping him under a certain yeah. uh, minute restriction. It sound, he, he makes it sound like he's on his deathbed when he's talking about him. <laughs> check, check this. Taj and Julius... Right, net rating on the court together is a minus one point nine. With mm. Julius and Mitch, it's a minus sixteen point three. Mm. Taj and Mark, Taj and, and Julius in two hundred eleven minutes. Julius and Mitch in one hundred seventy six minutes together. Julius and Portis minus eleven point three on the court. We know we, well, we yeah, know that yeah. we we know that. But um, it says here Taj is locked thirty six fourth quarter minutes. The Portis is sixty two. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah, like, I I feel like I've heard Fizdale talk about limiting Taj's minutes on purpose. I don't yeah. know if it's like a body thing or what, but it seems like he's always kind of thought about it. Like, I don't want to push his body too hard. So yeah. I don't know if that Tib- happens. Tibbs yeah. already broke this man down yeah. in, two, in two locations. Because I, <laughs> I don't know his minutes off the bat, but if I can remember correctly, like just – Skimming through my memory, I keep, I keep think, I think I keep seeing the one five mark next to his name for like the last twenty games. <laughs> Taj right now is getting uh, sixteen minutes. Yeah, there you go. Sixteen minutes a game for Taj right now. Yeah, so I think I don't know, I don't know if it's on purpose or they just trying to you know go more with Mitch and they like Portis is shooting, maybe. But yeah, I you, know how, you know how I feel about Portis. Mm, you love. I, yeah. Time, time to cut the cord. <laughs> time to cut it on Bobby, man. Revenge game was cool, but it's too much minutes for Bobby right now. I need Kev getting those minutes. You can mm-hmm. cut those minutes up for ISO. You can cut more minutes up for Taj when he needed defense out there yeah. and spacing. Mm-hmm. You know, and and not not just obviously Porter spaces the floor better than Taj, but Taj is just he just has better IQ, man. Yeah, he does. You know what I mean? He, he can set screens better. That's for sure. The best big, the best screen set on the team from all the bigs. I mean, we can just have Taj on there just to yell at, uh, just to yell at Julius when he's not not doing yeah, anything right. To hold Julius, yeah, account. hold somebody who hold him accountable. Right. I don't know if he respects anybody else. On to the court. to hold Julius accountable. So I, I think Portis's minutes is certainly something that they need adjusting going into this next quarter. Man, you got got to clip that man. I like minutes. him in spurts. I like Portis in spurts. What man. what is he giving you? I mean. Again, he gives you a little floater in the three. <laughs> Every Listen, now and again, he gives you a little floater. In the three. It's, it's the same I, thing yeah. as Ellington. If you're gonna lose with that type of production, next man up, Jails. I, don't, I wouldn't next call it up, Ellington. Man. I feel like uh, we know what defensively he's not the best. Um, it seemed like he had like a two or three game stint where I was like, oh, Portis is stepping up on the defense end. But now I don't know. And maybe in away. spurts. But yeah. again, I'd rather touch in that yeah. position. No, I feel I'd like, rather touch in I'm, that position. I'm not debating you on that. I'm just yeah. saying. I, I, I'm just saying I like Portis more than you do. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, <laughs> that's I, all I'm saying. But not not yeah. that not that his minutes shouldn't be cut. I I agree with that. Yeah, but you know, my thing with Taj is I don't hate that him. even in times he's gonna give you better offense than yeah. Mitch. He's gonna give you better po- defense than Portis in the fourth quarter. So I don't know. Maybe Fizz is on you know doing a, a minute restriction with him. Maybe you go back to Mitch to start. And then finish with Taj because you know Mitch's Mitch going to foul out. Floor. You that's know Mitch's going to foul out in two quarters anyway. So you let Mitch get his two. I'm just saying, call up Woot. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Where saying. is Kenny Wooten, bro? Call up, call up this man before he try to leave. Where <laughs> is Kenny Wooten? It makes no sense. We need rim protection in the worst way, bro. Lord. Mitch alone is not going to do it. Taj tries, but you need a rim protector. Definitely. You need a rim protector, a cleanup man, just like Mitch, but off the bench. Mm-hmm. Dude, Bring up Kenny Wooten, man. There's no excuse for it. Especially when you're facing these teams who are athletes, man. Yeah. Like, I still remember how much we just got clobbered once Mitch came out the game versus the Pistons, man. We we need Wooten, man. We need Wooten, man. They definitely need Wooten. So, uh, we'll see what else we got on the horizon. We got Bullet coming up. 
Well, we'll see. We haven't heard of yeah. a definite return, but we got Bullet coming up. Like that's a potential uh, minute stealer for Wayne Poten- Ellington. Oh, that's a stealer from everybody. Uh, from, from Kev. <laughs> yeah, Kev too. That's Kev's minutes. Yep. ISO again, yep. probably. Mm-hmm. So you're going to have to play him, right? Have see what to. You have. But the thing is, he hasn't played ball in, in how long, so in a while. you have to expect there's going to be a, a rust factor with yeah. him. But, yeah, he see, I think he was a projected guy to start or at least contend for minutes from the jump. So that thing that makes it a little even more, more congested, man. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, man. And I feel like everybody's kind of looking towards the December 15th uh, yeah. arrival date. Like, all right, they're looking at that as a trade deadline. Like, whoa, 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 you still got a whole two months mm-hmm. to go. Yeah, they still and you just assess. you know now the clock is on once again. Can they get rid of some of the glut here? Because that's gonna know. be another thing if the trade deadline comes that they don't get anybody added off these books. That's one thing that Perry and these guys haven't really done yet. You know, they haven't made those trades that yield you picks or anything mid season. Uh, so you have to wonder if they're even going to pull the trigger. It'll be interesting to see. That, that's going to be the next phase. Everybody's waiting for that December 15th, yeah, like, like a present. That's their Knicks Miss Wish, Yo, Jay Ellis. That's I, everybody's Knicks Miss Wish. Gonna, I already know the trade's going to happen. Who? <laughs> Elva Payton from Moody. <laughs> <laughs> the return of Payton of from Moody. Moody. That's, what's, that's happening. <laughs> the return of Moody. Elva Payton from Moody is happening. Perry is like, you wanted him, and you we got him. You wanted him, that's your guy? He's back in here, Look baby. Look at that. Oh, Guess man. Guess starting Alfred now. from Moody, man. Solves all your problems. Uh, I don't know. So, <laughs> four and 17. What, so, what's your gut feeling? Is he staying or is he going? My gut. Mid-season. My gut is saying he's going to stay the season. I think he stays. I think he stays until the end of the season. Dave, what do you think? Going or uh, staying? Uh, Fizz. Oh, Fizz? I think he's gone. <laughs> Dave he's gone. says he's a goner. I think it's a Mike Miller situation. Mid season, Dave, Dave thinks it's. I think he's gone. I think he's. I think they're going to do it, uh, Jeff Hornacek style. Like, last game of the season, get on a boat. Yeah. As soon as he gets off the boat, you're fired. <laughs> you're fired. <laughs> you're fired. I, feel, I, I think it's going to be Jeff Hornacek. So style, he thinks yo. the end of the season thing. End of the season, like the as soon as that game is over, and he and he gets off the plane or the boat or whatever, they're going to fire him on the jet. Yeah. I think it's going to happen like that. I, I think it'll be mid season, man. I think the schedule is too tough. I think the schedule is too tough, and I think there's, there might be some embarrassing losses more to come. Mm. I hope not. I hope not either, man. This is a tough schedule, man. This uh, is a tough I, schedule. I, mean, I, I'm, I I'm think pull it up right now. Fizz has to coach for his life and make these bold moves and get to these veterans, Got to make a man. bold move. You got to make a bold move. Bench Randall. Do that. That's, that's what you would do? Yes, Bench Randall. See, I, Bench Randall, start more at the four. See, I think I would do that. I would totally do that. Bench I, Randall, I start totally more at that. the four. And then uh, bring up somebody. Some Dotson. I think you let Kev go. Give it to Kev. Give it to Kev? Give it, give if you're trying to, to win, I don't know. If I'm trying to win, I'm trying to go Dotson. Well, listen, you, you still got <laughs> Morris. You still got Taj out there. I know. If you're trying to win, I'm sorry. I'm trying to win. <laughs> if you try to win. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> Yo, see, man, you're not even with the development, Jay. Let's no, come on, you're man. trying to win. If, you, if, you, if, you, if you're going to the development, then leave Randall. You need development, too. <laughs> so we got if you're going to development, read Randall up there and then and then put in um Randall and, and, off the bench. Yeah, if you're going development, full on development, yeah, then bench Morris, put in Knox. That's what I would do. That's what I think yeah. they would do. If you try I would to bench win. Randall, but I think they would bench Morris. If you're trying to win, put in Morris the four. Yeah. And then bring in Dot. If you're trying to win. Dot. That's what I think. Move RJ to the three. Move RJ to the Move three. Move RJ to the three. Yep. Dot's in that to two. Yep. Frank dot Frank RJ dot RJ Morris Morris Mitch Mitch Boom. no Taj. Mm. See, I go Taj. You know what? No, I'm scrap good. that. I go back to Mitch. I'll go back to Mitch because mm. he's gonna use up all his bullets anyway. By yeah. half. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, no. I'll go. I'll, I'll, I'll go Taj. I'll stay Taj. You go Taj. I'll stay Taj. Because, you know, Frank and Frank and Taj kind of got something going. Yeah. I and think Frank and Mitch could get something going, too. That could, plus, too. That could, too. Plus, uh, you know, the Randall-Mitch pairing hasn't been the best. But the Taj-Randall pairing has been pretty decent. That's true. That's true. I'm thinking about the DSJ-Mitch pairing. That's what yeah. I'm thinking about. Because yeah. that pairing has been okay. Like, he's he's giving them that lob over and over again. So, so we said Frank dot 
RJ, Morris. Yeah. And Mitch. Yeah. Yeah, it's just not enough consistent scoring. I mean, who's it the might, biggest? It might be. I Between mean, Morris is, giving, Morris is the, the leading scorer anyway. It would have to be anyway. Morris, Morris, RJ, and Doc. You yeah. have to make sure Doc got to be on. Got my guy got Doc. Three and D, he's got to get it in. Doc got to be on. Yeah. Doc got to be on. Be, uh, he's more room be for pick and roll with, with Morris at the three. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, uh, Doc hits the, hits the three point. RJ, uh, you can go do his thing. Maybe have more passing lanes or more open passing lanes to go to the hole instead of people converging on him all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I do like that. RJ at the three. I think they yeah. do need to move, slide RJ at the three and get a little bit more offense in yeah. the backcourt. Yeah. I like that. That's what get I'm a little bit more shooting in the backcourt. I, I think you go Dotson and then you get uh, second unit. You go. See the tricky thing is gonna be Al- is gonna be Alfred and and DSJ. Yeah, if, I'm, right. I'm not. Here's the question: Are you trying to win or are you trying to develop? If you're trying to win, go Alfred. <laughs> I'm trying to do. I'm still trying to do a little both. Respectable wins, right? Respectable. So you know, Elf, you know, ISO and DSJ wouldn't work. That'd be a complete abomination That's a complete defensively. Abomination. Man. So I think you would have to. If you're trying to win, you gotta. If you're go trying Alfred, to win, ISO, you, man. you go Alfred ISO. Yeah. If you're trying to win, you got Alfred. You go Alfred, ISO. ISO. Damn, ISO and Randall together. Woo. Yeah. And Kev. <laughs> and Mitch. <laughs> Alfred, ISO, Kev, Randall, and Mitch. Man, that'd, yeah, that'd be all right, man. Don't sleep, man. Don't sleep. That might be the firepower right there, Alfred, man. Alfred, ISO, Kev. All right for three. Randall and Mitch. Randall. That defense, man. Might that not defense, be bad. That defense is going to be rough. <laughs> defense yeah. is gonna be that rough, defense is good. but that's the problem. Uh, that that's the problem. That's why we are where we are. You have to stagger somebody in from the from the from the starting yeah lineup. Facts. Leave them in there extra few Facts, minutes, man. <laughs> uh, what else? Let's uh, let's talk about Melo, man. Yeah, hey, that Melo, Melo, Melo. Melo's back in the league. Melo's back. Y'all doubted him. <laughs> <laughs> all of you doubted all him. All the haters. All the haters. <laughs> Max, you doubted him. Yeah, yeah. So through Yo. a couple of games, he's got that comeback player story going. Yeah, man. Western Conference Player of the Week. Mm-hmm. I'm happy for him, man. I'm glad Melo's back in the league, man. I'm definitely glad Melo's back and yeah. dropping these these 20, 20 pieces on people's head, man. Facts. I can't wait to see how it looks like when everybody gets together. On well, board. we're going to see him in a couple days, so it'll be <laughs> it'll I mean, be a don't nice be too good game. now. Hold on. It's going to be a nice little don't revenge game when Melo's dropping 30 on Kev. Oh, no, nah, man. That's why we're going to start Morris. <laughs> Morris and Melo. Uh, the Dollar Tree version oh, versus the real deal. Here we go. It was the, meant to happen, the man. The Spider-Man's... Look, first, look, we had all the Dollar Tree Mellows on the team. First, we had Beast, <laughs> yeah, right? Beastly. <laughs> Mellow from the left side. Exactly. Now oh, we got man. Morris, man. Oh, like, man. We, we, oh. Back. We, keep us a, we keep us a Dollar Tree yeah. in the cut. Man. It definitely. Definitely. Keep, keep us one. A, a, a boneheaded, full of potential, never realizing it. You know, yeah. just a skilled player. Mm-hmm. They always seem to wear a Nick jersey at some point. Got to rap. <laughs> to give us, you know, delusional hopes. But, um, yeah, happy for him being back. You know, I think the, the interesting thing is that what they're saying is that, uh, Terry Stotts, is, he's just letting him be him. And, mm. you know, that was the biggest thing with Melo is how will he adjust, how will yeah. he dial it back and, and adjust his game based on his age and not being a man and not always iso balling. But Terry Stotts is going and say, hey, you know, you fit in around us. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to fit in around you. Mm. You do your thing and figure out how to flow with us. And that's what Melo said. He, he said that's like a breath of fresh air to him. Because if you watch the games, he's still doing you know, same, ISO man. on the elbow and, and doing his thing. The type of shots I've seen, I was like, I've seen that right. step before. Right, right, <laughs> But it's not, you know, he, he he's not dominating it as much. He's still realizing that it's Dame and CJ's team and he's yeah. got to flow through them. But when he gets his opportunity, he, he's making it happen. Yeah, man, yeah. And that's good for Melo, man. Like yeah. he deserves it. He's been out the league for so long. Hopefully, he can keep this up. And you know, this is gonna be a nice year for him. It'll be dope to see what team he's gonna be on next season. Because yeah. I'm not sure if he's gonna stay with Portland. If, if this is know. a good campaign, right? You know, this boy might call him up. LeBron be like, "Yo, yeah, yeah, hang, hey, hey, hang that up, hey, hang that up, Melo. Hey, Don't ah. pick up if LeBron calls. They had their chance. Hey, big, hey, big head, hey, big head, text coming soon. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Hey, big cut text cut the soon. banana boat boys <laughs> apart, man. That's messed LeBron up. LeBron definitely told him. LeBron chose Yo, Jared tried, Dudley son. over him. Get out of here, but, man. What lie, you think, what lie you think he's going to tell Melo nah, next season? Nah, man. They, they picked up Jared Dudley ah. over him. Friendship's over. I fought for Friendship's you, Friendship's over, I man. I fought for no you. No way. 
all my life I had to fight and I no fought way, for you, man. People, <laughs> people had the nerve to say, well, Jared Dudley's a better teammate and all this garbage. Bro. Give me a break, man. Whose man is that? Melo's been one of the most respected players in the league, league-wide. That's, that's not even speculation. That's not even made up. That's facts. That is a death From the horse's mouths around the league. Yeah, I remember Lance Thomas wrote him a, le- a love letter when Melo left, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> remember that? Hey, he's well respected, <laughs> man. So they're trying to tell you? me Jared Dudley's a better teammate. Stop like, get it, out man. of here, man. Stop it, man. All so right. I'm, I'm just glad he, he got, he gets another chance to kind of, uh, you know, shake the doubters about him, shake the, the, he was blackballed for a little bit. Yeah, I don't understand that. I don't understand. So kind of reclaim his name. I like yeah, that. Yeah, he was blackballed, man. These stupid new NBA analytics dudes don't know what the hell they be talking about. Sometimes, man. Yeah. He's, that's what try to. That's what they try to kill him. With. Yeah. Oh, ten games is plus minus. Da, da. Mm-hmm. Man, mm-hmm. can he put the ball in the hole, dog? Right. Like sometimes numbers lie. Facts. <laughs> I know the quote is men lie, women's why numbers don't, but sometimes sometimes the numbers lie. Yeah, you have to you have to <laughs> add the numbers with the picture. With the, yeah. Like you can. You got to put it all together, man. Yeah, and the biggest the biggest lie that's been told. Somebody tr- still try to tell me that uh, Kyle Quinn was better than KP, and he. Pointed to the numbers and I was like, "Dude, it's a damn shame." Dude, stop. This, this is this is damn this shame. Is, man. This is when numbers go too far. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Silicon Valley and all those guys. <laughs> <laughs> the number crunches. Right? The number crunches, man. The, the number crunches. So too far. It's too far. Yeah. So I mean that that's been the uh, the feel good story in the NBA so far. So congrats to Melo. Yeah. Man. Congrats, Melo, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Welcome it's working out for you. It's yeah. not working out for us. Definitely not, man. <laughs> Twenty games in, Word. it's ugly out here. People, people. talking about, man, we should have brought, we should have brought Melo back. Yeah. Mm. Nah. No. 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 Nah, nah, Still nah. no CPB. Nah. I mean, bring him back when he's when he's finished. We'll bring him back. You know, give him his flowers. You know, congratulations, Melo. Nah, not right. If we were competing too much going next on. season, would you bring him back? Because that's my stipulation. I'm like, yo, if you're close, if we're close, I would bring him back. Sure. But we're not close now. So. No, I'm not close. We're not close now, so I wouldn't. But if we were close, I'd bring him back. Yeah, if we were close, yeah, I'd, I would entertain it. If 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 things were steady, right now it's just not. Nah. It's too shaky right now. Definitely. The same old. We're in same old Knicks territory. Yeah, we don't need it's to be in the a scapegoat again. And, nah, we don't yeah, need that. We, we don't, we need, don't that need that, man. Definitely we don't need not. that, man. So that's what it is, my dude. All right. To the next twenty games, we'll see what happens, man. Yeah, man. I don't know. Hopefully, we win more than four. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, man. Hopefully. Because we got to get Moody on the show. If we end up tying it and we gave him all that tank command and stuff, we got to get Moody on the show. That's a fact, man. I, I'm We're going <laughs> to do a Moody appreciation. Moody episode. appreciation night is coming. Us definitely Moody coming. A, Moody appreciation. Yo, night remember is those coming. shirts I said I was going to make a Moody all last season? I'm making the shirts. Bring him back out. <laughs> Bring him back. Bring him back out. <laughs> Bring him back. I'm going to dust off the design. Man, you're a Moody appreciation <laughs> night, man. So, all right, YouTube. Make sure you guys comment on tonight's episode. Let us know what you guys think about the quarter season point so far. What have you liked? What have you not liked? Does David Fisdale make it to the end of the season? Leave us a comment below. And as always, make sure you like this video and share these videos. Subscribe to the channel. We're out of here, man. Peace.